Hello lovely boaty people, today I am very sad. Not only have we got this huge leak problem on the boat that we're going to get to a bit later, as much as I'd like to say I treated you to a bit of guitar and a sing song a couple of weeks ago, it was far from a treat for some. <laughs> I would like to apologise to AJW who turned off instantly that was horrified at the terrible voice that I've been gifted. That was uh, followed up three days later by a Fawnbird67 that told me not to give up my day job. Laughing emoji. After my already pathetic and failed rock star career as a punk rocker, I have now decided I am never playing guitar or singing ever again. I am, of course, only joking. I had so many lovely comments of support from all you guys. Well, 99.9% of you guys, because I, I love playing the guitar, you know, and to, and to throw a few songs up for you, you know, it was, it was just a bit of fun, really. So thanks to 99.9% .9 of you. Cheers. And the other two can bugger off to Foxes Afloat. I don't want you. <laughs> I am only joking, Crowbot makes everyone welcome, so even if you hate us, you can watch us. Just, you know, just don't be too horrible. I mean, next time, it's Bex's turn, Bex is up, so, so what's gonna happen then? You can't be horrible to her, can you? So today, Becca is gonna try and cheer me up from the two nasty comments by taking the boat out for a cruise. Unfortunately, we were met with a bit of a problem. They strongly advise you to not cruise. Mm. Strong stream advice has been issued for river advice for boaters on the river grade beans from St. Ives to Erie. They're saying we shouldn't really. Nothing better than a danger cruise. On the 6th, which was last Thursday, it said they'd issued a warning that there was a really strong current it would make it difficult to manoeuvre and stuff like that, but also the levels of the river were high in places, which might mean that you couldn't get under bridges or whatever. Crowbot doesn't follow the rules though, do we? So we really wanted to take the boat out today, uh, take it up to the marina up the road, back to get some diesel in there, get the engine running again, and just a, a little adventure really, weren't it? Yeah, but we might be scuppered by river currents. So we're just going to go and check out the situation and see what we think. I mean, it has been pretty horrendous down here, as you've probably noticed on the, some of the vlogs with the, the landing strips, but today it's a lovely little sunny day and it's, it has dropped right down, but they, are, they have issued a warning. Off to you. Thank you. The current on this river has been absolutely mental recently. Yeah, I mean, it looks all right today, so we're going to have a little look at the lock and see what's going on up there, because I know sometimes they lock them up, don't they? Oh. That's locked, isn't it? Got your navigation key? <laughs> no. Looks like we're locked in. Looks like we'll have to save our little Buckton cruise. There we are over there. And we wanted to head up this way, really. You know, they're really not advising people to go out on the narrow boats. Even though the danger cruise would have been fun, I think maybe it's, it is probably a bit better holding off, maybe for another time. Prohibited. Prohibitation. The warning signs are everywhere, guys. They do not want us going through this lock. Strong advice from the EA. I was uh, half expecting there to be a little banner with my face on it saying, don't sing or play guitar ever again. I'm not bitter, am I? Lucky for us, it's a lovely sunny day. I mean, is it lucky we could be taking it out if it was sunny and be making the most of it? But it is nice and sunny and it's beautiful here. The pub is heaving, but I'm still sad. So I sat down here by myself and vented my frustration and anger at feeding the ducks a naan bread. Lovely, I love it when they come on. Yeah, supposedly you're not meant to feed them bread. Sometimes when I'm angry, I do. One man and his duck. Whee! Luckily, there's something very exciting that's about to happen. Okay guys, so it's been roughly a week now and we're gonna check down into our rusty little bow thruster area. We've been having a tiny little bit of water sort of build up in there week after week and we were trying to work out where it's coming from. We thought we had eliminated it due to the cratch cover, but now a tiny little bit more has built up in there again after a sort of a few months. Some people think it's from the bow thruster leaking. We seem to think it's condensation. I don't know if that's sort of wishful thinking. So the process of elimination 
started with the water tank at the front of the boat that sits behind the bow thruster. We thought that could possibly be leaking into the bow thruster uh, compartment. Next up, we're trying to eliminate if it's condensation. We've got a load of puppy pads, pampers down there, a narrow boater's best friend. We've kept the stairs off that little compartment for about a week now because there's absolutely no ventilation down there whatsoever. If you've got a little bow thruster room, you need ventilation getting in there and this boat hasn't got it. So we think there's every chance this could be condensation. And it sits a foot away from the bow thruster tube, which has the river's water running through it. So there's so many different heat exchanges is going on but I'm not gonna get in there without my best friends am I so <laughs> let's glove up eh so let's have a look down here and show you guys what we're up against so we've got the puppy pads in there hopefully they have absorbed most of the moisture that's down in there and it actually does look a hell of a lot drier down here there's actually no condensation up there whatsoever we will see when we get the puppy pads out if any of them are like really, really wet. We left these under the bow thruster brain just to check for drips. This here, no water in them whatsoever. So it's not coming from the actual bow thruster hub. Can we call that the hub? The brain. There isn't any leaks coming from the brain of the, the bow thruster. Next up, it was Bex's turn to carry out her special wet pamper procedure. Yeah, she's very good at checking the moisture of a pamper. That's really wet there. Yeah, that's wet. Yeah, I can't, I can't do it for some reason. That seems really wet. Well. The left side of the front. Because that just might be... Now it is absolutely dry down here. Just having a little feel around in there now while it's dry. That's the main mass of water's out of there. Mass, there's only a little bit. I think maybe we should now leave it with the stairs off without the puppy pads in and see what happens over the next few days. See if it builds up any water again or whatever, because it's, it's pretty much dry in there now, bone dry. So we would be able to visually see it straight away. So the one thing that's making us cling on to the hope that it's not a leak is that we seem to remember during the summer months when it was warmer, that this little compartment was dry. So if it was a leak, in theory, the leak would just be leaking continuously. It didn't just sort of stop because mm. it's summer, whereas condensation would stop in the summer where everything's a bit, or at least it would reduce in the summer because it was, you know, a lot warmer. That's our sort of main counter argument for a leak at the minute, but we'll keep on observing. And it kind of makes you feel better if it's condensation down yeah. as well. <laughs> Optimism rules! Yeah! <laughs> we thought it was the rain first, didn't we? It's definitely not rain. Well, it was rain. It was rain extent. to some extent. Yeah. And actually, there's still the possibility there was a period of time before the cratch covers were built and also after they were made, built, um, that they were on and off a lot and we had a lot of rain so yeah. some of the water could have got in at that point well, a, and we hadn't checked it for ages that's the point actually now now it's completely bone dry we'll know now and it's yeah. open so next up we're going to go back into our battery compartment i think bex wants to get a couple of these batteries out and sort of check underneath just to have a look at what it's like under there don't ask me why oh you're all right <laughs> In this sort of situation, I think it's a good idea to have gloves on because you don't know how many little spiders will be down there. <laughs> that is one of the main reasons for the gloves, oh, I think. I know. Do you want gloves for the, you know, spiders? There is some massive webbage down here as well. You're <laughs> gonna freak out. It's uh, really rusty down here, so yeah, you don't need to. You don't need to let us know in the comments. We know. <laughs> So yeah, a bit embarrassed here. <laughs> Bex had to uh, unplug the batteries. I don't know how to do it. What lives underneath? Not much. No, that looks a bit, to me, that looks a bit like it could be corrosion from battery acid or something. It's all wet under here. Not quite sure if that's a leak or condensation. 
Well, they're gonna call us, I don't know, condensation crowbot soon, aren't they? So we'll leave these in the sun to dry. Probably not a good idea. Uh, leave this open to dry out as well and crack on with another little grubby job. And we'll come back to check on the leak a little bit later. So from one disgusting narrow job to another disgusting narrow job. What's a narrow job? <laughs> Down with the kids and all that, isn't it? So what are you gonna do, Bex? I'm gonna reduce the size of the toilet a little bit. Although I've worked out plan where it would all work as it is. Yeah, you're not going to see any wee or poo or anything, you're just going to see a wooden box. Welcome everyone, Bex's giant humongous uh, toilet that she built last year for our tiny narrow boat. I'm going to take off this section here so it's just a bit thinner. Yes. And then it will slide into alongside the sink unit. It's a pretty humongous throne, I mean normally on narrow boats you think you you make everything a little bit sort of smaller, don't you, so that it fits on board, but that's four times bigger than a normal household toilet. I was trying to be like cunning and keep it all compact, so there's like a compartment for where the sawdust went and everything. And it does actually fit with everything else, but it's a bit, because our bathroom isn't massive, so we figured actually what we would prefer is to have a smaller, smaller toilet and then we'll just keep a bucket of sawdust somewhere else. <laughs> That's <laughs> you know. all you seem to do in uh, this narrow boat lifestyle. Like put things together and then like a few months later you have to take them off again. So This was my first sort of building thing I did, wasn't it? So it was nostalgic. On the boat like it was, I mean, so it was like, you know, you learn as you go along. Is this moment very nostalgic for you? She can't smell, can she? Yeah, I am the perfect candidate for doing this really because I can't smell at all so it just it doesn't faze me good to have a purpose in life isn't it Why don't you just use like one of the little scrapers that we've got? Or does that seem to do a, you get a better end result with that? I forgot about them yeah. that's why had these puppy pads off now uh, overnight. We've had the stairs off overnight too. We've had the fire blaring, thinking it's probably gonna be quite dry in there. And if there is any signs of a leak, you will start seeing like a little trickle or something. So let's do it, let's get in there. That seems completely dry in there now. There's not one little sign of a little bit of moisture in there. We'll keep these stairs up for a while now, I think. We'll keep the fire going as well. And just see what happens, really. My new birthday present from Bex, my Draper Venom VST 350. Twin blade guys. I don't know, is it twin blade? I'm very excited to let rip with my new birthday present, the Venom. I'm gonna cut up a whole load of wood for the fire. Don't know what's going on here. Something's not working. This is not working at all, is it? That'll keep us going all night. And we'll 
keep this short and sweet because I know you guys don't want to see like toilets, but behold Becca's lovely tiny little toilet that she's made for our tiny little narrow boat. I mean, the girl's talents are absolutely wasted, aren't they? She could be a professional toilet maker. Day three, having a little look down here in the bail thruster area. Let's see if there's any little signs of water. Yeah, you'd think if there was a, a proper leak coming through the bow thruster that you would start to see just a little trickle of water somewhere. So this is what we're looking for right now. And if there isn't one, condensation. Yeah, we really don't want it to be a leak from the bow thruster, do we? Because that would be coming in for the river. And yeah, no water as of yet. The puzzle continues. 